Hey, it's Jared. So you have a calendar and you want to get that into Notion and you want to be able to set events that recur. Now, I have created a tutorial on how to connect your calendar to Notion, but what about those recurring events that you have? Uh, if you have tried to connect a calendar to Notion, one of the things that's a challenge is that Zapier doesn't necessarily work when you connect your calendar to Notion and want reoccurring entries to show up in Notion. So let me break that down. When you create something in your calendar, perhaps you use Google Calendar, you can connect that to Notion and have it automatically populate that calendar event in Notion in your Notion calendar, which is great. That is something that I utilize. All of these entries here that you see that show scheduled and some of the ones that are even marked as complete were things that came into Notion because Zapier pulled it in from my traditional calendar. Calendar apps still work better as a calendar than Notion does as a calendar. And then the simple fact that we can't easily create recurring calendar entries in Notion still just makes traditional, I guess you'd call them traditional calendars like Google Calendar or maybe your iCal on your Mac or something like that, a better calendar solution than Notion. But if you're like me, you want all of those things to be in Notion because you can tie them to everything else. For example, I have my interactions calendar and so anytime I have an interaction with a person or a place, uh, I want to have it in this calendar. And so when I go and add it to my Google Calendar, which is great because if I get an invite from someone or if I enter it myself, it's going to populate my Google Calendar, Zapier will bring that entry in to my interactions calendar. However, if it's something that's recurring, it only brings it into Notion once, which is kind of annoying. And so there are two different ways that we can attack this and, and attempt to get those recurring calendar entries into Notion. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull up my calendar. Uh, I do on my Mac use the calendar app, but the calendar app is connected to Google Calendar. And so if I add a new item here, in my calendar, it's going to go and populate a Notion because I have a Zap set up to pull that in. I also have a video on this, so if you're kind of maybe getting a little lost at this point, I have a video on how to connect Google Calendar to Notion using Zapier so that when you add a calendar item, it brings it into your calendar in Notion. Not only just the title, like the, you know, the, the name of that event or that entry, but also the time and date, uh, and then also brings in the location and the notes or the description of that item as well into Notion, which is awesome. But if it's recurring, the calendar sees that as one entry that recurs. It doesn't actually add it in as individual calendar items. And so when it comes to that zap, connecting that to Notion, it only sees that as one entry. And so it only brings one entry into Notion, which is kind of annoying. So how do you set recurring calendar entries in Notion? Well, there's really two ways of doing it. The first way would be just simply to copy and paste um, your entries in your calendar, and that's going to create a new entry. So if I know that every week I'm going to have, for lack of a better example, a haircut, I can copy this to my clipboard. So I could go and hit copy, and then I can go down to, uh, let's just put one three weeks out because that's pretty normal for me and I can paste that event down here, and that's creating a separate event. So this is a manual way of doing it that is less work than going and duplicating things in Notion because if you duplicate things in Notion, you're gonna get your event title with copy of in front of it. So you're not only gonna have to choose uh, change that title, but you will also have to go and maybe even change the date or you know, drag and drop it or something like that. It's a little bit more of an involved process. But by taking that and copy and pasting it like I just did, it's creating a new entry in Notion. And so I should, within the next, uh, 
let's see, few minutes or so, have that calendar entry populate in here. It takes a little bit of time. It's not totally instantaneous, but within a few minutes that would populate in here. There's another way of doing it that is a lot more hands-off. It's actually completely hands-off once you set it up. And that is using Zapier and creating a scheduled Zap. So let me show you how this is gonna work. We're gonna go and create Zap. So you're gonna need a Zapier account. You're also going to need to connect your Notion account to Zapier. So if you haven't done that yet, you can do that when you go through this process. And I also have a video that I'll link to in the description below that walks you through that setup process as well. It's actually the same video uh, that I created the connection between Google Calendar and Notion. So I'm gonna click on Open Editor, and we're gonna open the editor in Notion. I'm going to choose um, Haircut Every Three Weeks. So we'll just use that example. Uh, rather than choosing an, a trigger app, I'm gonna choose Schedule. It says Schedule by Zapier, that's great. I'm gonna choose an event uh, every, let's just do every month. So I'm just gonna choose Haircut Every Month as the title. We'll hit Continue, Day of the Month, so you can choose a day of the month or you can get custom. There's uh, no custom choices right here, um, but I can also choose time of day. So this one might be a little bit tricky because in this instance, you have to choose a specific day of the month, um, whereas if you're choosing a week or something like that, let's look at those options. Uh, let's choose every week instead and see what our options there are there. So day of the week, we might choose Thursday instead, time of day, um, let's choose 10 a.m. And so the recurring isn't going to be as great as you can see here as it would be in a calendar where I could choose third Thursday of every single month. That might work out a little bit better for this particular example. A haircut every week or maybe, you know, I change this to coffee with wife every week, Thursday at 10 a.m. That's maybe a better example. So as you can see here, this isn't going to be perfect uh, for every instance, but there are a lot of instances where it is gonna work out. For example, if it's the same time every week, the same day every month, uh, the same time of day every day. So if it was every day at 7 a.m., uh, you know, there are lots of different ways you can configure it, but it is still not perfect. So now we have every day on Thursday at 10 a.m. this item is going to be added to my calendar so I'm gonna hit continue I'm gonna test my trigger which it's gonna show me the information here which is uh, for for tomorrow so it's so Thursday the 9th up oh, actually that's for next week uh, because this time of day is already passed for today and I'm filming this on a Thursday so I'm gonna hit continue now here's where we connect this to Notion. We'll just type in Notion. And if you have not connected Notion to Zapier, this is where you would do that. Um, you can go through the process. It walks you through it. It's pretty simple, but there are a few areas that you can get caught up in this setup process. So if you need a walkthrough on this, definitely watch the video uh, where I show how to connect Zapier to Notion, and it will walk you through the process so you can see everything that is required. So I'm gonna click Create Database Item and hit Continue. Uh, make sure that I choose my Notion account. Hit Continue. Now I choose my database and I'm going to choose my Interactions database here. And it's gonna populate all of the fields from my Interactions database. So when we're looking at my Interactions database, if I go and look at one of these items, uh, so for example, this one, you can see I have a lot of uh, potential entries here, um, a lot of fields. I have an area that I can select, so I can call this personal. I have different type, and so this is going to be for dining, and uh, it's with friends, so I'll call this relationships. Um, it's status scheduled, that's fine. I can tie this to a contact, so you can see I have a lot of uh, related database entries here um, in this and so some of those are going to show up in this area so I would want to title this 
Coffee with Wife because that's what I want the, uh, the title of that entry to be. Um, I can choose status and put it as scheduled because it's something that's going to be created and scheduled at a specific time. Uh, I will want to choose the date, so every week at a specific time, I want that to be put in. And the uh, area, this is a personal or I guess a family. I think I have a personal, no, we'll choose personal. I have personal and family as different areas in my life. Uh, initiated by is an old selection that I don't really use anymore. And so I also have content, which is essentially the page information, which I don't commonly use except for notes on interactions that I fill in later. So this is going to give me uh, pretty much everything. You can see that there's an error here. One of the nice things that I can do is actually refresh this without losing anything. Zapier is pretty good about that. And so because it had an issue bringing in that information, I can just hit refresh and type is now there. And so I can see the different type uh, areas and I'll just choose dining as one of those because it's we're going to go get coffee. It's kind of falls under that category and then I'll hit continue. So now we have some uh, a test item that we can have sent to Notion just to make sure that everything populates correctly. And it gives me kind of a preview of that information here. I'll go ahead and hit test and continue and it's going to push that out to Notion. And so now I can go over to Notion and I can take a look and see if that worked out. And so it should be a entry and I'm looking for it. It may not be populated quite yet. You can see the haircut that I copy and pasted showed up that was from the calendar earlier in this video. Oh, it's right here, September 1st it came in. Um, and that's most likely just because it pulled in some pre-existing data. So from here on out, it would populate with the date and time that I gave it specifically. And so if I want to go and look again at this particular uh, uh, zap before I turn it on and allow it to just create that every single week for me, um, I can go and look back at the trigger. And so looking back at the trigger, and seeing the test data, that's the data that it was going to utilize when it, uh, when it threw that in. And so because it uh, was utilizing test data, it threw it into the uh, September 1st position rather than today's date, which is September 2nd. Um, but in the future days, it will populate on Thursday and it will show up as an item in my interactions calendar. And then, of course, I can fill out the rest of it within Notion. But now that's something that I don't have to do manually. And this isn't the, this isn't, as you can see, there were some little issues here and there through this video that like aren't super ideal. Ideally, it would be great for us to just simply have the option to create something recurring if it's in a database let us make it recur based on something. It would be great if we can do that. But there is no simple way to do that in Notion right now. And so utilizing scheduled zaps has been kind of the best way that I've been able to figure out how to do this uh, and still be able to have some control and not have to use crazy complex formulas and stuff like that, which uh, sometimes work, sometimes don't, and often require you to do some sort of song and dance to get them to trigger. So I hope that this was helpful and you know, use your creativity. How could you use scheduled zaps to have things automatically trigger? I did another video on how to have recurring tasks show up using a scheduled zap. That one uh, tended to just work a little bit more naturally for me than this uh, recurring calendar items. But having this understanding, now you can see different ways that you can use Zapier to schedule things and have them appear in Notion that you normally had to do manually. This should save you a ton of time. And if it did, make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel here, and let me know down in the comment section below if there's some other topics you'd like me to cover in regards to Notion and getting things done with Notion. But that's going to do it for today. Thanks so much for checking this video out. Hope to see you back soon. Take care.